Hello and welcome. I am Claire Meshkat. I'm Natasha Wilkerson. And we are co-founders of Vivify STEM. We are a curriculum resource company dedicated to providing easily accessible STEM resources for educators. And we actually got started, um, our background is in aerospace engineering, and we worked as engineers. I worked in the Navy designing satellites and Claire. And I worked at Boeing Commercial Airlines, Boeing Space Exploration, and then most recently at an agricultural aviation company called Air Tractor. And so our background's in space and aviation, which we love, but we also found this passion in working with students, um, specifically in STEM education. Uh, I specifically was frustrated in how students were not able to connect the math and science in their classroom to real world engineering. And so that's what we bring when we work with our students. And we developed this company to make it accessible to teachers like yourself to help you bring engineering and real world careers into your classroom. And also things that are easy to do for all kinds of levels of expertise, whether you are a master of robotics or you're just starting out in STEM and want to know what to do next. So there's a lot of talk about what resources you need. Um, we don't recommend that you need to go all out and spend a million dollars buying all the things, but there are a few resource, resources that we found are pretty neat, one being Sphero Robotics. Yeah, and so robotics can be really pricey. Um, the Sphere robot isn't too bad. I think it's like around $100 for a robot. Um, but what I like about it is it's just this ball <laughs> and there's not like a million Lego pieces everywhere. So that's my first reason of liking it. Um, and then the second reason is all the cool stuff you can do. And so in this session, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the coding challenges that you can do with your students and then also how you turn it into an engineering design project, which is pretty fun. That's really neat. I didn't realize, or a lot of people don't realize too, that it's more than just coding. Yeah, and so I, I think the coding is the hook and really gets the kids excited. Like I was able to create this code and the robot moved, but STEM to me centers around engineering design. And so coding is a tool, but what's the problem we're trying to solve? And so we turn it into a challenge. Um, so one activity we'll talk about is how to do this maze activity. And then this other one is a chariot challenge. Um, we'll talk about adding some other things to your sphere robot to create this chariot. So stay tuned. I will tell you more about how to use Sphero in your classroom. Let's get started. In this course, I'll briefly discuss the advantages of using Sphero robots. How do you get started? How do you use Sphero Robotics in the classroom? What activities you can do with them? And I'll finally finish with some design challenges with Sphero Robots and how you can use them in a STEM family night. So first, why Sphero? I really like Sphero because of the multitude of ways that you can use them. There's lots of different Sphero Robots. You have the Mini, which is really cute and small, and you can drive it with your facial expressions, which is great for younger kids. There is the Bolt, which is the basic round Sphero robot that has a programmable LED matrix and advanced sensor options. There's also the RVR, which is more of a rover type robot, which you can connect to third party applications like Arduino or Raspberry Pi, and even the Sphero owns little bits to do advanced programming. Now for the sake of this course, I'll be focusing on using the Sphero Spark Plus, which you can use all these activities with the other robots as well for the most part, but this one is my favorite because it's reasonably be reasonably priced. Uh, it's really cool because you can see all of the hardware on the inside. It's really robust, so it has great shock absorption. It can even go in the water, so that makes some great applications for other activities that you can do. And it has a great ability to be able to be used for a wide range of ages. So anything from starting out in pre-K or kinder all the way up through 12th grade because you can go from just driving it, basic driving of a robot and getting used to the response when you give it an input to programming with block programming and even into programming with JavaScript. So those are just a few of the reasons. Another thing is the charging. I can use the Sphero robots for my whole hour and a half long programs without charging it. You can even get the, the Bolt has this really neat carrying case that has 
15 robots fit in it and charge it and store it all in one. There's also a really amazing app that Spiro provides that has activities that can be student-led or the teacher can use these activities that are already built into the program. And you can also look for other ideas on doing activities in there for your classroom. So once your students are ready, they have their smart devices, have connected to their Sphero robots with the app. Now what do you do? Well, the first thing I do is I give the kids some free time to play around with the robot, see what its capabilities are, and familiarize themselves with how it works. The great thing to do is to pick one of the games that is already provided in the free uh, app, like Fortune Teller or Hot Potato. What's cool about those games is that they're fun, they're going to learn how to use the robot, but later on when they learn how to program, they can actually make their own versions of those games by altering them. The next thing that you get to do after free time is actually start using them in activities. The first thing that I'd like to do is play with a maze. They can use the drive function to do this and then later on program how to get through a maze. Spiro provides you with this tape that already has centimeters measured out on them or you can use masking tape or painter's tape just to make a simple maze on the floor or on a poster and then have the students take turns driving the robot through the maze and see if they can do it with the drive function and then later on with programming. Another thing that you can do to get kids familiar with how to use Sphero robots is to play tag. So have all of your students or maybe just a few at a time Make sure they change the color of the robot because that's an option. You can change the color of the light that flashes in the robot, make them different colors so you can keep track of whose robot is whose, and have them play tag and try to touch the other team's robot and then run away using the drive function. This will help them familiarize themselves with how what they are doing in the app translates to the movement of the robot. Now after you've done those activities is when you can start to learn basic coding. Now I've provided some links in the handout that will give you the resource guide that Sphero Education provides for you. There is a whole bunch of free resources through the Sphero Education app. And so I will provide that link for you. Go to it and there are resource guides that will walk your students through different activities that they can do based on their skill level and what types of programming that you want them to learn. For lower elementary students, they really want to gain mastery over the draw function and the movement and lights and sounds programming. There's some really great activities that are provided in a resource guide in the link in the handout for those different things. And then as they move up to upper elementary, onto middle school and lower high school, they need to gain mastery over advanced programming options like loops and if-then statements. So let's start out with the basic draw function. Now that's not really programming, but it does help kids see how their movement on their smart device translates to the movement of the robot. And that's how they'll be able to build up a common sense of what a program block means as far as the movement of the robot. So you can start playing with this draw function by giving students something to draw that the robot will have to do. Say like draw a big heart. They'll draw the part on the program on the draw function and then the robot will follow that path on the floor. Then give them another size and we'll draw a small heart. And once they see this comparison to the big heart to the small heart, they can see how their robot moves with what they have drawn. And once you've done that, you can move on to activities to teach things that can even meet standards that you're already teaching in the classroom. One example of this activity that I like to do is the perimeter function. Now with the perimeter activity you can draw a simple shape and the robot will follow it and then use sensor data to collect the perimeter of that shape. So there's a nice video on how to do that that I will provide a link to in your handout as well. Once your students have mastered the basic drive function, now it's time to start actually programming. So the programming function that's available in Sphero is block programming. You can do the advanced JavaScript later, but block programming is great because it gives a visual representation for students to understand the sequencing into coding. 
So there are lots of resources, again, that are free on the Spiro EDU app and website that I'll provide a link to in the handout. Um, some things that I like to do are go back to the maze activity. Have your students, instead of using the drive function to navigate a maze, have them program how to get through the maze. Then change it up by adding obstacles, make it an obstacle course. Maybe have other student teams create an obstacle course for another team's robot to navigate through. After you've done that, you can start adding some engineering design challenges to your programming. One thing that I like to do is the long jump challenge. That's where you take a box of sand, or I like to use rice because it's less messy, and create a ramp that students will have to program their robot to drive up the ramp and jump into that box of rice or sand. This is great when you're thinking about the Olympics coming up as well but they'll have to measure the distance that their robot jumps into the sand and compare it and challenge other teams to do better. The variables that they'll use in this program are the roll speed and the time of roll. So they'll get used to the different variables when using the programming. You can change this into a design challenge by having the students create their own ramps. How long will it be? What will the angle be? You can add math in there. How wide will it be? Will they provide railing for their ramp? Or will they change the material of the ramp to add more friction? Think of the science concept, concepts that you can add in there. It's a great challenge for them to learn from other teams and see what they're doing and be able to apply that to their programming or design. Another design challenge that I like to do with Sphero Robotics is a bridge challenge. So in this challenge, they will have to create a bridge out of easily accessible materials it must be freestanding and supported between two desks or two piles of books. If you do it too high off the ground, I would make sure that you put something under it like a pillow or a mat or maybe that box of rice or sand that you use in the long jump just to make sure. Even though Spiros, I've never broken one. They have great shock uh, absorption, but still you want to protect your robots. But the in this challenge, the students will have to program their robot to drive across the bridge and hope that their bridge holds the weight of the robot all the way across. Now, another thing that I'd recommend you getting for these types of challenges are a cover for your robot. They make some that are this very flexible and grippy material. That is great for not only just adding some friction to make sure that your robot's going to drive well on any surface, even slick surfaces, but it also makes it a lot easier to clean because if your classroom floor is anything like mine, it kind of picks up a lot of dirt. So um, these are great because you can just peel them off and then wash them. Now it's time for your students to learn loops. Now watch the videos and have your students go through the lessons that Sphero EDU provides for learning loops. One great way to learn them is have your students to draw a shape, a basic shape like a square, and then mimic that drawing with programming on the robot. Then tell them that they need to be able to draw the square five times. Well, how would you have your robot do that five times? And that's where you introduce loops. Now, of course, I think that you should also introduce an engineering design challenge with learning loops in programming. The best way to do this, which is actually one of my students' favorite activities that we do during the year, is the chariot challenge. Now in this challenge, students have to design and build some sort of chariot to be driven by your robot. So as the Sphero rolls, it will pull their chariot and they must go through a course. Now you can do a course that is like a race in an arena. The best way I've done this is using a rectangular shape that students have to race the other teams going around this track five times. So they have to use loops, they have to use all the basic other programming movements that they should have mastered by now, and use the design challenge of being able to make a chariot that's not going to fall over while they go through this track and race the other teams. If you're hurting for space when doing this challenge, you could also make a course where they have to go down a length of a hallway or a small space in your classroom and come back and keep going for five or so times.
A great way to showcase your students' skills in robotics is to host a STEM family night or parent night where you host activities that involve Sphero Robotics. The families and your students can get together and be able to accomplish these challenges. One thing that I like to do is do a Sphero mural. So you can take butcher paper and make a barrier either with wooden planks or pool noodles or hula hoops or I like to do those big plastic bins and lay the, lay the butcher paper down in them and then put dollops of paint around the edge have your Sphero robots placed in there and then drive them to make a mural with the paint. Now when you do this, make sure that you have the rubber covers and then use the press and seal wrap that you can find at a grocery store and wrap another layer of protection on your robot. That makes it a lot easier to clean. Another station that we like to do is called Balloon Pop and that's where we tape a bunch of balloons at the bottom of the wall and then have students and their families stand behind a line and drive the robot that they with a chariot type of design on top that they will use to try to pop the balloon. So it will look something like this, where they can have a cup. These solo cups are perfect size for being able to fit over your robot. And you can attach things like toothpicks and wooden skewers and thumbtacks to try to pop the balloon that's against the wall. You can even add prizes within the balloon so that they get to pop the balloon and win a prize. Another thing that we love to do, again, is my favorite activity, the chariot challenge, except we add a twist. So maybe your your night for STEM or your parent night is themed. It's uh, really easy to make your robotics activities fit to that theme. We've done space in the past, and so we have our chariot challenge be a Mars rover challenge, where students have to create a rover that their robot will drive that has to carry as many astronauts to safety on the surface of Mars as possible. And the astronauts are ping pongs that they have to carry in cups. So we make this a race again and we line a hallway with strips or lanes of masking tape or painter's tape and then have students and their families race their rovers by programming or by driving down and back to see who wins. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope you can take back some of the things that we've taught you today back to your classroom. And if you want to learn more information, uh, check the links out in the handouts that you were provided, and you can find us at vivifystem.com. We hope to hear from you soon.